Ghana's Cocoa Board says it plans to raise about $1.3 billion through a syndicate of banks. It's on course. This comes as the Cocoa Regulator launched the $600 million receivable backs loan from various development financial institutions. Damilola Kimbami, the head of research at Financial Derivatives, now joins me for a focus on Ghana's within Africa's cocoa industry. Damilola, a pleasure to have you join us for this conversation on Closing Bell West Africa. Shall we start first by having you give us your overall assessment on the attractiveness of Africa's cocoa industry at this time? Well, um, first of all, the largest um, producers of cocoa globally in West Africa, and by that I'm referring to Ivory Coast and Ghana, so they account for a significant part of um, the amount of cocoa that is produced. And these two countries are relatively small and have been facing um, several challenges, which to an extent have affected um, the production of cocoa from their end. Um, more recently, obviously, is the pandemic, which has led to reduced exports from this country. Um, the weak global demand to us affected them. But with that said, a lot of things have been occurring right now in these two countries. We know that um, there's increased investment in this country. They are trying to increase Ghana as much funding for the various infrastructure plans that it require. Because in these two countries, Ivory Coast and Ghana, the practice, the farming practice is still very much subsistent. And um, the techniques that are being used are still a kick. The cultural practices that are being used are still a kick, and these have contributed to um, shortfalls in the production coupled with weather conditions. But with that said, the sector, the industry, the cocoa industry is still very much attractive, and we know that um, cocoa is used for so many things. There's a lot of byproducts in the confectionery business, um, even in healthcare and what have you. So it still has its um, attractiveness. So, uh, Dami, Ghana appears to be going all out, if you know what I mean, uh, using two approaches at the same time. First of all, Cocoa Board planning to raise funds, and then, on the other hand, the same Cocoa Board planning to increase prices of Ghana's cocos. What do you make of the strategy? Um, these two strategies that are being adopted by the Ghanaian um, government, basically, they're trying to, one, increase production, and like I just talked about, the um, weak exports, the low global demand. So they're trying to create more revenue. So the government is trying to create more revenue because obviously with what has been happening with the pandemic, it's um, government revenue and external reserves are taking a beating. So this definitely is going to increase production, so more revenue for the government. It's going to also need to increase income for farmers. Bear in mind that sometime last year, um, Cocoa Board actually pegged its farm gate prices. And now by increasing it, it's actually an incentive to farmers to produce more because obviously if your price has increased and you're producing more, you get more revenue from it. So it's also a way of incentivizing the farmers. And with the other incentive or initiatives that are being carried that you're going to boost productivity. I talked about um, the archaic farming techniques that are being used. These funds are going to be channeled towards developing um, or bridging the infrastructure gap in the cocoa industry. And it's also going to strengthen the value chain so in terms of processing, in terms of packaging. And we know that the global cocoa prices have been very volatile, again, because of the weak global demand. So by investing in the industry, the domestic industry, the government to an extent is going to hedge the domestic farmers from the, um, ex from the exposure to volatile prices. So there's going to be deeper or a stronger value chain there's going to be opportunities in processing and packaging in the various byproducts. So I think also it's going to provide um, more jobs for um, the cocoa farmers because obviously there's increased output. You, you require um, more hands on deck. So definitely we should see the unemployment rate of Ghana, which is about 6.7%. Um, we should see that reduced because if more jobs are created. Then Ghana has a very high um, poverty rate because, like I mentioned earlier, it's a small economy. So with the increased aggregate demand and output, increased productivity, and more jobs being created, it should alleviate the poverty stance of the country. And this will lead to an overall boost in Ghana's economic growth and development. And bear in mind that um, at least pre-COVID, Ghana was one of the fastest growing countries in sub-Saharan Africa. It grew about 7.9% in Q4 2019. Although its growth 
rate in Q1 may to 4.9. But with all these measures post-COVID, we expect to see that the growth recovery trajectory would improve for Ghana. Now, Dami, if, if Ghana was unable to achieve a raise in, in, in its price of cocoa pre-COVID, how confident are you that the country will be able to achieve it now? Bearing in mind that it's also not the first time countries in West Africa will have this conversation. Last year, we had the three prime producers of cocoa in Africa actually come together to say they will take a stand and raise their prices, but it, they couldn't quite achieve that even before COVID came in. Yes, yeah, I think, uh, first of all, for Ghana, they actually were able to increase their farm gate price twice, um, maybe not as much as what they expected, but they were able to increase the farm gate price twice. And I believe with all these, um, with the um, foreign investment funds that are coming in, the funds from um, DFI, the Develop Development Financial Institutions, I think this would also show that there's some level of seriousness and interest from the international market in the development of the cocoa industry. This, if the government sees this, I believe that that would further empower them to be to take this price increase more seriously. And if you are trying to develop the industry, you have to make it attractive to investors, you have to make it attractive to the players. And from this, everybody definitely should benefit from this. Because I think there should be, at least post-COVID, it, it seems more optimistic that um, the price increase will be successful.